After another early morning wake-up call, it was time for me to head towards the Nairobi airport. After years of planning, I was finally getting ready to fly to one of my bucket list destinations. Kigali, the capital city of Rwanda. With limited time in the city itself, I made a brief stop at the Kigali Genocide Museum. I didn't take any photos or videos inside out of respect, but it's an amazing place that's worth the visit if you come to Kigali. After leaving the museum, we took a short drive to another site that's famous for its role in the Rwandan genocide. Hotel Rwanda, made famous from the 2004 movie, still exists today as a modern luxury hotel. It's a bit crazy to think that only 30 years ago, people were sheltering here to escape the violence that spread across the country during the 1994 genocide. Kigali was proving to be an amazing city to visit, and it's incredible to see how well Rwanda has developed despite the challenges that they have faced in their recent history. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay for much longer, as we had to begin our long drive towards our next destination. The cityscapes of Kigali slowly began to give way to the farms and local villages of the Rwandan countryside. After a few hours of driving, we finally came across the Virunga Mountains, a sign that we had reached the border between Rwanda, Congo, and Uganda. It was here that I checked into my lodge for the next few nights, with a stunning view of Mount Sabino from just outside my room. I'm not one to expect the fancy things on safari, but this was a proper luxury lodge right underneath the volcano. At night, it would actually get so cold that the lodge staff would light a wood fire inside your room. Living the good life for sure, but I needed my rest after a long day of travel for the next day. Good morning, everyone. It is almost six in the morning. I am up, I'm packed, I'm ready to go, and uh, we're about to head out on our first gorilla track. Very excited. So let's go out and see it. Even though it was a cloudy morning, it's still crazy that I got to walk out of my room and see the volcanoes right in front of me. From the lodge, we made a short but bumpy 15 minute drive towards our meeting point. If you weren't awake before, you definitely were now. I did ask for a brief stop to enjoy the view of the volcanoes in front of the local farmer's fields and took the chance for some landscape photography. At last we had arrived at the Volcanoes National Park headquarters and it was time to get ready for our gorilla trek. Everyone here is required to check in with the park authorities, and then we all had to sit and wait while we were assigned a gorilla family to go see that day. We were also assigned a local ranger who would be our principal guide during our trek. We were assigned the Sousa family, a family that lived about an hour's drive away. Gorillas live all across the Virunga Mountains, so some families are closer to the park headquarters and some are farther. I didn't mind the drive though, because it gave me more breathtaking views of Rwanda. I knew we were close to the start point of our gorilla trek, as groups of school children started to wave towards us. Finally, we made it to the start point, and we began our long hike up towards the jungles of the park. All treks begin as hikes through local farmland, but it's still a stunning view. The farm hike is the easiest part of the trek, if you can call walking up a mountain easy, that is. Along the way, our ranger guide would teach us a little bit about the environment that these gorillas call home, and how they have learned to coexist with the people that live on the park border. The views were spectacular, and it was shaping up to be one of the best hikes I've ever done. Eventually the farms began to give way to jungle, which was a sign that we were approaching the boundary that separates the park from the locals. When we arrived at the border, an armed guide was waiting to escort us through the jungle. Forest elephants and buffalo call this area home, and it's extremely dangerous to venture in without protection. As we made our way through, the thick vegetation and bamboo started to make it feel like a real jungle trek at last. This was a much tougher hike than the stroll through the farms. Do not skip cardio at the gym, and this is why. After a short while, our guides had us all stop and get out our gear because we had finally reached our endpoint. Mountain gorillas. Words really can't do justice to the sort of emotions that you feel when you stand right in front of a gorilla. It's one of the most intimate and special wildlife encounters that I've ever had.
Photographing gorillas as they move through the jungle can be a challenge, but I was happy to grab a few solid photos when they briefly would stop. Eventually, we came across one of the Sousa family's silverbacks, and he was posing perfectly in a small clearing. He didn't seem too bothered by our presence, which goes to show how comfortable these gorillas have become around humans over the years. He was just happy to groom himself and live the life of a gorilla, and that was special enough. We followed the family down the mountain, but the thick vegetation was making it harder and harder to get photos. But just being around mountain gorillas is such an incredible experience, and even if I wasn't exactly filling up my memory card, I was so grateful to be surrounded by these animals. Our time with the gorillas quickly came to an end, and it was time for us to head back through the jungle and out of the park so that they could have some peace and quiet. Our descent down seemed to time up perfectly with the afternoon rain showers. The rain made the hike less enjoyable than it was when we were coming up, but if you come to the rainforest, you can't complain when it actually starts to rain on you. With the hike over, I decided to spend the afternoon at the Diane Fossey Center, a newly built gorilla research center just outside the park. Here they had a recreation of Diane Fossey's cabin from when she was researching the gorillas. And a great educational exhibit. Definitely worth the afternoon visit. All right, trek number one is in the books. It's 5.30 in the morning, time to get up for trek number two. Hopefully we get a really good group and uh, get some more awesome pictures. The following morning, we were assigned the Agisha family, one that lived even further than the Susa. The start point for the Agisha was almost two hours away, which was in a much more remote area as well. The drive was going to take us right to the border with the Congo, but I tried to spin it as a positive and just enjoy looking out the window. As the roads got bumpier and bumpier, I realized that this was going to be a very different experience than my first trek. At last, we made it all the way to the start point, but this time I could already see the border with the park right away. In the distance, I could see the outline of Mount Nirangongo, an active volcano in the Congo that frequently erupts. In less than 15 minutes, we hit the border, with large bamboo forests waiting there to greet us. This was a much different environment than the straight jungle on the last trek. It goes to show that no two experiences are the same, even if you think that you know what to expect. The jungle began to thicken though, and the straight bamboo path started to become narrower and narrower as the vegetation started to take over. We heard over the radio that gorillas had been spotted on the other side of a small hill. Easy enough to get to, right? Except even small hills take over an hour to get around when you're in the jungle. Fresh gorilla droppings were a sign that we were on the right path, so we pushed on. The jungle was closing in on us, and we had to watch ourselves as stinging nettles would frequently irritate our skin. A nearby gorilla nest was also a sign that the gorillas were close, which gave us the motivation to continue fighting through the jungle. Eventually, we were able to cut our way through and find the clearing where the gorillas were supposedly nearby. We started to get our gear ready where our team of trackers had spotted the Agisha. The Agisha were much more relaxed than the Susa, and they were content to just sit around as we watched a few meters away. There are 36 members of the Agisha family, making them the largest known gorilla family at this time. 
they would sit and groom each other, bond, and occasionally take an interest in us as we admired them. This was already a totally different gorilla experience, and even if the hike was miserable, the photos that I got with the Agisha were some of my absolute favorites. We maneuvered around the family, photographing different individuals lying around along the way. A nice luxury to have when there are 36 different subjects. We later found one of the group's six silverbacks, who was enjoying his lunch until he decided to pull a bamboo shoot right on top of us. We got out of his way and continued to watch him eat. Gorillas like to strip the leaves off of shoots and branches, which is a fascinating behavior to observe. Control over their opposable thumbs is what has let great apes evolve over millennia, and we can clearly see our similarities to gorillas by watching them eat. He quickly wore himself out from all that eating, but even if he was lazy now, the experience gave me some great photos. We then moved on to a nearby baby with its mother and another gorilla. Much like human babies, baby gorillas are still trying to figure out how the world works, so most of the time you just cling on to mom for the ride. Photographing a baby mountain gorilla was a huge focus for me, and this youngster was proving to be a fantastic subject. Eventually mom had enough, and she made sure the baby was on tight before making her way through the jungle, giving me my best gorilla encounter of the trip. The Agisha were just incredible. I literally couldn't have asked for a better group to photograph. We finally came across one of the other silverbacks, who like the other one was happy to just be eating. Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to the Agisha family and make our way down the mountain, which was about as much fun as it was coming up. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media to see more photos of my amazing gorilla trip. In the next video, we'll be visiting the park's other famous primates, who definitely live up to the phrase, monkeying around. So stay tuned.